Yes, very, very good morning. I'm already getting a lot of good mornings from all of you. So collectively, good morning to all of you. Let me tell you a few uh, points which will be a backgrounder to today's session, which will help you to understand why I took up this topic, though it doesn't sound very nice. It sounds morbid, in fact, you know living with an alcoholic or dealing with an alcoholic. It sounds so negative, whereas most of the time we try to give you some nice, positive and happy topics. So I'll explain it to you. There are certain chemicals which have an effect on the brain. The uh, simplest one out of that is caffeine, which is there in tea, coffee and colas. One level up is nicotine, which is there in cigarette, BD, good cars. The next level is alcohol, which we are going to be talking about today. And the ultimate is what we call as psychotropic substances, starting with the simplest ones like marijuana, weed, ganja, going all the way to what is called coke, which are almost, you know, one overdose can be fatal for a person. Now, these chemical substances alter the brain chemistry whenever you inject them into you. So why do people do it at all? Why should somebody be taking alcohol when he knows that it is harmful and it you know, costs a lot of money, creates a lot of relationship issues? All these things are there, yet people smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol or take drugs and all that. The reason for that is that because of the you know, alteration that it has on the brain, you feel that kick you feel lighter, you feel more relaxed or you feel more excited. Even something which is stressing you out and is very painful to you, even that seems to disappear. Your senses become, you know, numb. So that is what, uh, you know, is uh, happening. Vidya, yes, we have already, uh, you know, fixed up this identifying mood swings of toddlers. I don't remember the date, but we have fixed it up in January. We will be announcing the uh, dates to you. Okay. So what happens is that I have a tough day at work. Boss has shouted at me or my job is threatened. Something like that has happened. If instead of going home, I go to the bar and, you know, sit and have a nice drinks and all that, I automatically start feeling lighter. Same thing with people who smoke cigarettes, people who, you know, take drugs, all these uh, things. So there are two aspects to injecting these chemical sub, uh, substances or you know misusing these chemical uh, substances abuse chemical substance abuse it is uh, uh, called there are two aspects to it one is the intoxication the other is addiction intoxication is like i told you whenever i inject these sort of chemicals into my body i drink the simplest ones which are most common with youngsters are those things which are called Bacardi Breezer and all that. And in many uh, cases, you know, people don't even realize there are youngsters who say, no, 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 this is not alcohol. This is just a fancy drink. And all. Then you go on to beer. Even there, people say, no, no, the content of alcohol in beer is very low. I just have the beer to feel fresh and nice and something like that. It's not like alcohol. Then you go on to the more harder drinks that they are called. It could be whiskey, vodka, rum, all these uh, things are uh, there. But the common factor is that any of these chemicals, they actually, you know, give you a kick. They change your brain chemistry. Take a simple thing like caffeine, as I told you. There are people who say, I'm so tired, I have to now sit and do this work or something. Can I have a nice hot cup of tea? Yeah, I had that tea and I felt fresh. Now I can sit down and do my work. So you see how uh, it is? Same thing with cigarette smokers, they'll tell you, I need to have a smoke here. 
I'll have a smoke and then I'll get down to whatever it is. I can do whatever. And at the third level, as I told you, we have this thing called the uh, um, alcohol. So when a person, you know, takes alcohol through the mouth, it goes into the stomach. From the stomach, it goes into what we call as the stomach lining. And from there, it goes into the bloodstream. And from the bloodstream, it circulates and goes to the brain. And as I said, the brain chemistry gets altered. And people feel that lighter mood or that kick or whatever it is. And they feel very nice with themselves. And that is what keeps taking the person more and more and more towards alcohol. Now, the brain chemistry not only gives that relief from the tension or stress, it also you know, affects the behavior pattern. And that is totally unpredictable. An intoxicated pe person may just slink off into one corner, refuse to talk to anybody and sit there very feeling dull and very quiet and calm and all. On the other hand, another person who injects alcohol into his stomach can actually become boisterous. He starts shouting loudly, he starts using bad words, he starts provoking other people and things like that. So we cannot predict how it happens. What will be the result? Secondly, we cannot predict how much alcohol will have this type of uh, effect. Somebody starts seeing a change of behavior in the first drink. Somebody goes on to third, fourth, fifth drink, and then he starts showing this behavior. In fact, here I want to caution you about something. Anybody who says, I'm a social drinker, I have my drinks, I just take two pegs, okay, not more than that. And after that two pegs, I can drive a car from here to Mysore, I can do the most intricate work, my memory is good, I don't get affected by alcohol, that's why I drink. Now, to me, that's a very dangerous thing. If a person starts getting effective with the first peg, it is a warning sign at least to him. If the person has taken the first peg and second peg and the third peg and he is still so-called feeling normal, you know what happens? The mind starts demanding more. So if today I had three pegs, tomorrow I would like to have four pegs, five pegs. There is no end to it. And equally bad is those people who say, I am not an alcoholic. Yaar. I can do without alcohol for days and weeks. But now New Year is coming. All my friends and we are all getting uh, together. And anyway, we have a holiday. No? We have a long weekend and all that. So this uh, New Year weekend, I'm going to be spending with my friends. And I'm going to get drunk happily. After I come back on second and resume my work, I will be normal. I may not have a drink after that for many, many days. This is what we refer to as binge drinking. B-I-N-G-E. Binge drinking, according to me, is worse than regular drinking. Because the rate of intake of alcohol matters how much damage it causes. So a person who has one peg of alcohol all 30 days of the month, what is his consumption in a month? 30 pegs. Another person, for 28 days, he doesn't touch alcohol. And in the last 48 hours has 30 pegs or even 25 pegs. Now he can say, I drink less than that guy. No. That guy was taking in only one peg in a 24 hour cycle. Here in a 48 hour cycle, you have taken 25 pegs. These are some of the things which people are not even aware of. So they have this thing saying that only when I'm with friends, only when there's some occasion, that is when I uh, you know, uh, drink. So I'm not an uh, um, alcoholic. And that brings me to, you know, the effects, as you know, you are aware of it. Financial drinks are not uh, uh, cheap. Even the most ordinary drink uh, available in the, you know, slums and this and that also costs a lot of uh, uh, money. Drinks inevitably lead you to bad company. People who are more ethical and you know, peace loving and cultured. They keep away from alcoholics. So inevitably, the person starts getting into bad uh, company. 
work efficiency comes uh, down because of the uh, drinking and the uh, uh, you know the health there's so many factors which alcohol affects different ways of health liver is only one of them cirrhosis of the liver is extremely bad and there's hardly any cure for uh, uh, it so starting with cirrhosis of the liver alcohol can also affect your heart you're more prone to having cardiac problems than a person who does not uh, uh, drink. Then loss of emotional control, as I told you, some people start getting into arguments, some people start shouting, the entire personality changes and people start keeping away from that, uh, uh, you know, person. Relationships get affected. These are all the uh, things that happen, including some people do not even remember that the previous night I got drunk and I was... Uh, you know, in this miserable state and I was fighting with people. I get up in the morning and say, yeah, I had a few drinks and then I went to sleep. The memory itself gets lost. Out. But the other people are not going to affect the way you treated them, isn't it? So this is what I want you to understand about drinking. So when you have a person close to you, a friend, a family member, whoever it is, who is indulging in alcohol. First, let us deal with denial. A person who says, I'm not an alcoholic, that's the worst thing that can happen to a uh, person. You need to know, you know, how to first strengthen yourself and then deal with the person. So as always, I just, you know, jotted down a few bullet points. I thought I will share them with you and Anish has made them into attractive uh, slides for you. So first, let's talk about helping yourself. You are not the alcoholic. You are the person who is suffering the consequences of alcohol. You have a close friend or family member who is into alcohol. So how do you help yourself? Please do not change your routine for him. He doesn't want to have dinner till 11 o'clock in the night because he's sitting and having his drinks. You go ahead and have your dinner at 8 o'clock. I'm just giving an example. Hiding alcohol and this and that does not um, help. He will find his ways and means of getting his alcohol from wherever he wants. Hoping that he will get better on his own. I will pray to God. I will do this. I will do that. I'll be very nice to him. So he will realize it. No, it doesn't uh, work. Similarly, threats of walking out. If it's a family member and you tell that person, if you don't stop drinking, I'm going to walk out from you. I'm going to leave you and this and that. That creates more anger and perhaps more of drinking uh, 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 also, rationalize your self-blame, guilt and shame. Do not allow the person to make you feel guilty. I know of men who tell their wife, because you keep nagging me, because you don't cooperate with me, because you are bad to me, that's why I'm drinking. I'm earning so much. I'm doing so much of uh, hard work for the family. I'm earning so much. You people have no gratitude for it. So I go and get uh, a few drinks. What's wrong with it? So in a subtle manner, that person will try to push the blame on you. Please do not get into that vicious cycle of self-blame, guilt, shame, which will, uh, brings down your self-esteem. Uh, uh, Develop alternative activities. Do not let your routine be surrounded by this person who is into alcohol, even if you cannot stop him, you can find other activities. So this is the first level that I told you where, you know, I want you, if you are a victim of having a person in your life who is uh, having alcohol, whether he uh, admits that I am an alcoholic or whether he is, you know, uh, in denial, either way, it doesn't matter. First, start off with, you know, strengthening uh, yourself. Do not allow the person to bring down your self-esteem. Strengthen yourself. Get yourself some good friends and all that. So let us see that. How do you deal with others? This is the second set of bullet points that I uh, made out. You know, how do you deal with uh, uh, the other people involved in this whole uh, uh, process? The first is that you ensure safety from violence whether it is family members, spouse, children, or whatever it is. Make sure that nobody gets affected by violence because this person goes berserk. He loses control over himself when he is intoxicated. 
and he can cause harm to uh, people. So ensure safety from violence, which will also include things like, you know, if the person is uh, driving a car after uh, having his drinks, you know, he can be violent with others. He can knock somebody down. He can get into road rage. He can get into fights with uh, the cops and they may arrest him, all that. At the same time, identify one or two reliable confidants. Somebody with whom you can just pour out your worries, your anxieties that, you know, this person is drinking and I'm feeling this, this, uh, this. Okay. Consider informing elders and take advice from the right people. Do not defend him with the children. Explain to them without blaming. So whether it is children in the family, whether it is elders in the family, I know of women, for example, who when her parents come to visit and this fellow is drunk, she pushes him into the bedroom, says, you sit there and drink, closes the door and comes down and says, no, he has a very bad headache, you know, so he went to sleep early. So sorry, we didn't know that you were coming. Come, I'll entertain uh, you. Do not protect the person, whoever it is. Don't think that, you know, they will feel bad about him. His image will come down. Only if his image comes down, his awareness will be greater. Same thing applies to children. Don't blame, don't accuse and all that, but say that, yes, daddy has got into this. See, you alcoholism or addictions to chemical substance are recognized by World Health Organization as a mental disorder. So same way as you would say this person is sick, you help the children understand that this person is not well. There is some sort of mental stress and which is causing him to do these things. At the same time, I picked up this word from one of my counselees who used to go on telling her teenage son about how the father gets drunk and what he does and he's violent and he's this and that. She thought, you know, I can relieve my thing by my uh, by talking it over with my son. But he's a 13 year old boy. He doesn't want to hear bad things about her father. So you know what he did one day? He just stopped his mother and said, don't use me as a dump truck, dumping your garbage, you say, no. Don't use me as a dump uh, truck, he said. So instead of children, build a wider social circle. You may have people with common interests. You may even have people who have the same issue on hand. For example, Alcoholics Anonymous has another branch which is called Al-Anon. It is family members of people who are into uh, alcohol. They can sit and share with the, each other. They can give emotional support to each other. Keep plan B ready. If this doesn't work, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and make him understand, and make him do things. But if it does not work, what am I going to do? Okay. Here, I also want to tell you about how when I was talking about how people, uh, you know, protect the uh, person who is into uh, alcohol. One of the things that, uh, you know, people uh, uh, do is they believe that when the person is not drunk, he's a thorough gentleman. And therefore, they use it to say that he is basically a good human being. It is only alcohol which is spoiling him. Only when he gets drunk, he misbehaves. But that is only an excuse, I tell you. People who misbehave when they are in the influence of alcohol, the next morning, they go out of the way to be nice to others and create a good impression so that other people will say if the family member complains saying that you know he gets drunk he gets violent he does this he does that they say no 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 no. see what a nice person he is i spent the whole day in the office with him no he's a thorough gentleman he's so helpful he's so soft he's so kind they put up that mask remember uh, uh, that so don't get taken away and don't encourage that person to do that if he keeps showing his best uh, uh, side then you have to understand that you will not get influenced by that uh, person. So then comes the question, how do you interact with this person? As I said, you're either living with him or you're so close to him that he is part and parcel of your uh, life. So how do you interact with uh, him? The first thing that I would say is keep communication channels open. Okay. Offer support if he is willing. If he is not willing, just ensure that communication is open. When he is not under the influence of um, alcohol, 
be nice, talk to him normally. You don't have to go out of the way to flatter him, but make sure that you are expressing your uh, uh, emotions. And look for an opportunity. If sometime you know that uh, you know he's uh, open to it, you talk it over with him. At the same time, let him know that what the effect of drinking is having on you. I am having to cut a sorry figure in front of my elders. I feel children are getting affected. I am losing nights uh, sleep because you, when you come back late, I'm wondering what happened to you. You may have got drunk and things like that. So let the person know when he's in a sober state, what the effect is with them. Be open and honest. Never try to hide things and do things behind the back. Because then that gives him the right to say, if I'm doing something wrong, you're also doing something wrong. So be honest and open in whatever you feel. Identify drinking triggers. When he goes to these parties with his friends, he gets drunk. He has these particular friends who are deep into alcohol. When he keeps their company, he has more this thing. Or when he gets uh, under stress, that's the time when, you know, he uh, gets more and more into uh, alcohol. Identify those things and see what you can do. What you personally can do is to adopt a carrot and stick behavior. When he gets drunk and when he is misbehaving, become very cold to him. When he is not drunk and when he is nice, give him all your love and affection. Let him over a period learn that he has to earn love and affection from his near and dear. And as I said earlier, do not tell lies. Anything, let's say you go to meet somebody to find out what can be done or how the addiction can be done or something, and you hide it from him and he comes to know. He will blame everything on you and say, you are doing things behind my back. You are going and talking to people about me. You are putting me down. And that makes me so much more angry. That is why I go ahead and, you know, get uh, 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 drunk. So keeping these uh, uh, things in uh, uh, mind, you know, understand that there is always this uh, Jekyll and Hyde type of situation where the person puts out a very nice, gentlemanly, calm, quiet effect on others. But with his near and dear, he brings out his worst characteristics. So become aware of those people who are getting affected. I told you it could be parents, it could be spouse, it could be children. How it is affecting uh, them is what you need to uh, do. Look into your own stress and anxiety. There are people I know whose whole day revolves around that. You are having a nice day. You can enjoy the day, but... From midday itself, you start wondering what time will he come back? Will he come drunk? Will he, you know, be unreasonable? Will he do something? And six hours before he actually comes, your day itself is uh, spoiled. Don't let yourself get into those uh, uh, things. And like I told you, avoid any form of guilt or shame or those uh, things because they can, you know, lead you to a uh, uh, feeling of uh, becoming, you know, stressed, uh, going even into uh, uh, depression at uh, uh, times. It can, you know, disrupt family dynamics, recreation, work, all these uh, uh, things. There are innumerable great Indian women, the wives, who think that if I keep showering love on him, he will change. If I am nice to him and accept him as is where is, he will uh, change. If I protect him from the shame that would otherwise come, if other people come to know, he will feel thankful to me for uh, protecting. It very, very, very rarely works. That has been my experience in uh, this. Including, I mentioned to you, people who are in denial. I can stop drinking whenever I want to. See, last year, you know, when I was planning to go to Shavrimalai and I put on that black dress, for 40 days, I didn't have a single drink. She had the capacity of uh, doing it. But you know what he did? 40 days, he kept away from alcohol, went on the pilgrimage. As soon as he came downhill, the first thing he did was he went to the bar. 
Now it was just to prove to others, just to show off, just to even convince himself that for so many days he kept away from alcohol, but he has not got over the habit. It takes much more than that. This sort of, you know, religious factor or anything like that can only be a temporary solution. It cannot be a permanent solution to it. And remember, unlike, you know, nowadays even cigarettes are being looked down upon. There are places where they say no smoking over here. Cigarettes should not be uh, sold in the vicinity of schools and colleges. People are looked down. Even in public places like airports and all that, now they've made those kiosks that if you want to smoke, you have to go inside that booth and only smoke over there. You can't smoke in a public uh, place. Restaurants are uh, preventing people from smoking. And of course, same thing with drugs. It is looked down. It is a crime. Police is chasing the drug peddlers and all. But like I told uh, you, when it comes to alcohol, it's a very socially accepted uh, thing. And that is the reason why with the growth of our economy and with people earning more and leading better quality of life, you will see that alcohol has become more and more and more rampant. Somebody was telling me the um, other day, there was this great uh, Bollywood singer called Muhammad Rafi. Many, many years back when he had come to Bangalore for a program, he went around and he saw the greenery and the beauty of Bangalore. And wherever he looked around, there were trees and parks and all these. And he was fascinated. I'm told he had even said that if I did not have my work in Mumbai, I would have shifted to Bangalore. I love this city so much. The other day, somebody was telling me that if he were to be resurrected, come back to life again and come to Bangalore, he would immediately break into his old, very popular song, Bar Bar Dekho, Hazar Bar Dekho, because wherever he looks, he will find bars. He will find thousands of bars all over Bangalore uh, uh, city. That is the change that has uh, come in. And Bangalore, is, I'm just giving as an example because I live here. Whichever metropolitan city or large city you live in, alcoholism is getting more and more rampant, more and more acceptable. The government gets a huge revenue from the taxes on the production and sale of uh, alcohol. Middlemen make a lot of uh, money. There's so many things. Restaurants who serve alcohol get better business than restaurants who do not serve uh, alcohol. So taking all these things into consideration, we have to be a little serious about it. We have to understand that these things, you know, cannot just be wished away. We have to all wake up to it, including those who are suffering. And the last set of points that I made was about when is there an indication that it is better to let go of the person if you're not making any uh, headway. If you find that your needs are not being met, basic needs are not being met. Like I told you, finances, this man gets drunk and he doesn't earn his money and the family is suffering financially, anything like that. You are seeking those needs from others. If you are being forced to take a loan from somebody else, being forced to go to your other relatives and find emotional solace, which you should have been getting at home. So if these are happening on a regular uh, you know, uh, basis, and you are scared to ask for more from your partner or whoever the person is. You feel that if I ask him for some favor, if I ask him even for company, if I ask him today, don't drink, let's have a pleasant evening together. You are scared. You feel that he will lose his temper. He will shout, he will blame me and all that. And also, if you realize that your friends and family don't support your relationship, that is when it gets very dangerous. If you're alone in this whole uh, uh, thing and there is nobody else and you still feel obligated to stay with your uh, uh, partner, whether you like it or not. These are the final warning signals which should help you to wake up and see to it that something has to be done. Things have gone too much out of uh, uh, control. You put in your effort. You have suffered in silence for so many years. Somewhere you have to wake up and see what are the alternatives, what are the options that you can do. One of them, of course, is counseling, which, as you know, we offer free counseling right here. And Purni will give you a, an idea about what we do, what are the type of services we offer. 
not just uh, with regard to chemical uh, substances or alcohol, but anything where you are emotionally disturbed. So I'll take my usual one minute off, and here is Purni for you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to uh, you know see uh, you all and uh, find that you know the interest that you take in such topics week after uh, week. That surely shows the interest that you have in human beings in the dynamics of uh, human uh, relationships. So um, considering you know that uh, alcoholism, so the ism is what uh, really. Uh, brings in all the agony and the anguish in families, in the welfare of children, in the welfare of relationships. Our little contribution to the society uh, would be uh, through uh, counseling. So you all must be knowing by now, but surely for the hi Jayshree, hi Gayatri, surely for the benefit of um, those uh, who would uh, want to know. Uh, we uh, offer uh, free counseling at uh, Banjara. So our center is at Atinagar. So effectively, one comes down uh, here and uh, meets. It's excellent. It can be either the caregivers, the people who are involved with the alcoholics. And you can also possibly bring them also along if they are ready to come. But at least if they're not ready to come, you insulate yourself. Na? So why not we uh, insulate uh, ourselves and protect ourselves? from uh, any kind of untoward uh, things that may happen because of the uh, addiction to alcohol. So we offer a free uh, counseling. And um, what we uh, do is that in case it's difficult for you or if you're in another city, you can uh, make a phone call, have a video call with our uh, counselors. Or if you think that you, know, you express better with uh, writing, you can send a mail also. So um, our uh, website has got uh, some excellent uh, videos and articles on various topics of human interest like this, which can help you in some way. For example, um, uh, just uh, taking off from what Ali was saying that you have to be assertive. So there are some good articles on assertive communication. There are some good articles on how you manage your own uh, emotions. So management of emotions, assertive nezrat. Now, on these lines, there are different articles which are available, which can help you to prepare better, you know, for any such eventualities or help others to prepare uh, themselves. So any mode, uh, you know, either through face to face counseling or through uh, telephonic counseling or uh, video calls, Gmeet calls, anything. It's just that a communication channel has to be established, whichever that it could be. It can also be through uh, emails. So that is as far as counseling is concerned. And uh, a very good morning to Vinita and uh, Praji uh, too. And uh, another thing now which I would uh, uh, want to share uh, with you is that um, Banjara has a service arm which is called uh, Helping Hand. And we have around you know 400 odd volunteers uh, in this uh, Helping Hand, out of which around... Um, uh, 200 to 250 of them are, um, you know, active and functional at any point of time. And what they do is they go to various hospitals uh, of the uh, likes of, um, say, um, MS Ramaya, Baptist, um, and uh, CV Raman Hospital, St. John, Sri Krishna, Victoria uh, Hospital, Site Care. So it's like Pan Bangalore. You have our volunteers who go there and uh, they... Um, you know, offer uh, free services over there. If you or anyone, uh, the fact is that each one of us is responsible in our own ways. However, uh, through volunteering, if we can find a purpose also for ourselves in our uh, life, it takes off, you know, diverts our attention, gives a new different uh, purpose to our lives. So if any you or anyone want, can spend, say, just around three hours in a week, and no training is required, nothing at all. You just need to have the heart to reach out to people. We had an annual day where we had nearly 100 volunteers. It kept drizzling the whole day, whole day, not a minute of a dry time. 
but then the spirit of the volunteers you know you have to see it to believe it so many of you all uh, you know are uh, have been volunteering at banjara and um, if that suits you fine please spread the message and let uh, all uh, do little bit of volunteering in our own ways so that's about the counseling and our helping hand volunteering and over to ali for your interactive session Yes, I'm back. So let me have a quick look at the chat box. Of course, there are a lot of good mornings. There are a lot of hi, Purnima. Good morning, Purnima. Hello, Purni. <laughs> Nobody says hi, Ali. Good morning, Ali. See, the moment some pretty face comes in, you people all start you know, wishing her and interacting with uh, her. Sri Devi says, blessed morning. Yes. Okay. Surekha has, uh, no, Rakshanda has a question. I lived with drug addicts and I can relate. The trauma of in and out of the addiction centers. Yes. I don't want to sound very critical, but let me tell you that the success rate of the addiction centers is not very high. So I'm not stopping you. You should and can, you know resort to the addiction uh, and, and through these centers, but be aware of the fact. And there, one important thing is people who go to a de-addiction center of their own uh, you know, initiative that I need to get out of this drinking habit. I need to become, you know, overcome this. The, their possibility of success is higher compared to somebody like the wife says that if you don't go to a rehab center, I'm going to leave you and go away. Then he says, okay, okay, no, don't go, I'll go. To the rehab center those people it doesn't work in in general i have uh, uh, seen okay uh shobha says hi ali my school is surrounded by alcohol addicts they have a beautiful family and children the family faces problems how can i help them to give up this alcohol addiction we have to look at you know individuals let us not generalize and say that you know we are surrounded by these alcohol addicts and what can we do everybody has their own reasons everybody has their own family dynamics so we have to treat them in that way and alcoholism as i mentioned to you is declared as a disease by who but i would extend that to say that it is a family disease it is not just the alcoholic who suffers it is the entire family who uh, suffers so the first thing is you know when you have these type of families around you Please first help the family members more than the, uh, you know, the alcoholic or the uh, addict, because they are the people who are suffering for no rhyme or reason. Uh, so, ah, I keep seeing a lot of other chats. Ah, Rakshinda says chemical addiction destroys the whole family. Exactly, Rakshinda. That's what I was uh, telling you. Next. Gayatri is saying good morning, but I want to have questions. Yes, Rekha says, abuse gets worse over time. It is better to nip it in the bud and get help immediately. What is the best way of doing it? Yes, it is a fact. I told you there are a lot of people who say I'm a social drinker. I can stop whenever I want. I don't overdo. I don't misbehave when I have my drink. I drink alone in my own house and I drink. But all these are warning signs. The as I told you, the uh, intake of the alcohol through the stomach lining and through the uh, you know, blood circulation goes to the brain. At that point of time, it causes intoxication. The intoxication uh, you know, reduces by next morning. The person either has a hangover or he is back to normal. But if this continues on a continuous basis, at some point, it permanently alters the brain chemistry. And that is something which is very, very dangerous. That time, if the person says, okay, I know that it is bad, I will stop drinking. He starts getting withdrawal symptoms. I had a wonderful friend, came from a very illustrious family, IIT, IIM, joined one of the top MNCs, 
rose up to the top, became a CEO, but he succumbed to alcohol. At that point, when he realized that there are times when he's carrying alcohol in the morning when he goes to office and when nobody is looking, he pulls out that alcohol from the drawer, has a swig, and that starts showing on his face. So when things started getting bad and he realized that uh, you know he may lose his job, he took a decision that I will stop drinking. If two days, 48 hours he doesn't drink, his hand would start shaking so badly that he could not sign a check. Imagine CEO cannot sign a check. So that is what caused so much of problem. He had two lovely children. Both of them grew up hating him. And at one point when they grew old enough, they just walked out on the, uh, him. The only person who remained with him was his wife. And she bore the brunt of it. He got cirrhosis of the liver and he died at 52 years of uh, age. So these are the things which we need to caution. How to do it? There are various ways and means of uh, doing it. It has to be done individually. We can discuss it depending on what the case is and what the family support is, what are the causes, since how long the person has been drinking, what are his drinking habits. We have to take all that into account and structure it out. So like Purni was just telling you, we offer free counseling for various things, including addiction related issues. Okay. Roshan says, my two brothers who are no more, eldest brother retired as deputy general manager of Air India and had to attend social gatherings wherein you are supposed to drink with others. Out of courtesy, they will take it and quietly, nobody is looking, empty the glass in a pot of plants, poor plants. They must have got drunk. Upbringing of children is important, difficult to change when you grow up, as they say, habits die hard. Now, I, I would like to congratulate Roshan's brother who had that courage of conviction to say that I don't want to get into arguments. People are, what, you're not drinking, we are all drinking, why you want to do this, what, you think you're very great, or you, you are some son or sannyasi, is it, or something. Don't get into arguments with them. In fact, uh, when Roshan uh, wrote this, uh, I remembered the same thing happened to me when I was in hostel. There was a fad. Suddenly, everybody started smoking cigarettes. And they would say, oh, you are not drinking, I mean, smoking, you are a sissy, you are no good, to and all these things started. So you know what I would do? When the uh, lounge is full of uh, the students who come back from uh, the departments and they're waiting for dinner to be served or something, I would walk up to the counter. The cigarettes were being sold right in the hostel itself. So I would walk up, buy one cigarette, light it, and walk around the whole lounge saying, hi, how are you? Da, do, do, da, da. Shaking that cigarette all over the place. Go outside, throw the cigarette and come back. So if somebody can develop that sort of resistance, it is wonderful, isn't it? Yes, Vidya says how to deal with people who drink and hit their wives on an everyday basis. And because of the that, the child at home starts getting mentally affected. These are the people to whom my heart really goes out, uh, Vidya because they suffer from various aspects. As I mentioned, no, there could be financial difficulties, there could be social difficulties, there could be violence, there could be you know, effect on the children. So one has to look at this holistically. But as I said, I don't have an overall simple cure that you do this and it will happen. There are people who go into de-addiction centers, stay there for X number of days till the whole effect is gone. They are given those interviews, uh, tablets and all that so that the withdrawal symptoms don't hit them. In most addiction and the addiction center, there may be some consultant psychiatrist or somebody who takes care if there are any such uh, symptoms. That is one way. The other is to go to a regular hospital where they have you know, a department which looks after these things and they have capable doctors who will uh, you know, tell the person what all treatment to take and what are the medical thing. On the other side, on the non-medical side, we have this wonderful organization called Alcoholics Anonymous, who are all people who call themselves recovering alcoholics. And they say that when we start this process of our recovering, we want to help brother alcoholics or sister alcoholics. And they reach out to people. They give a lot of emotional support. You feel like you are part of a family. That's another way of doing it, right? Surekha says, codependency makes the partner cling on to a relationship that is going downhill and it is getting parasitic. How can we serve a full meal to ourselves rather than crave for the 
malnourishment that we are treating ourselves with yes sure absolutely right and this is what i was telling you about how there are so many people to go on and on and on supporting so in answer to the previous question also and i will also put up on the slides if you see that there are people who hope that he will get all right he will learn his lessons if i am nice to him and if i shower him with love and affection and i give acceptance to him some day he will wake up and say oh i've been doing something wrong let me tell you in my experience it is very rare it's a miracle if that happens you can't wait for a miracle to happen isn't it vinita says ali it's also the mindset which we carry in our heads if someone takes alcohol it doesn't mean that the person is bad or abusive yes exactly vinita people tend to look at things in black and white as it happens with anything else there are always pros and cons to anything my concern you know is about people who are social drinkers in inverted comma social drinkers because today they just have a rare drink once in a while with good company and they don't get violent they don't misbehave they are nice my only concern for such people is that the trigger can happen any time this person is already used to consuming alcohol since a long time his body has got used to it his brain has got used to it let's say he has some trauma a relationship problem or he loses his job or he finds somebody is passed away whom he loved very much his mind looks for the easiest solution to the emotional trauma that he is going through and what is that easiest solution have the second and third and fourth drink which he never used to have now you are exposing yourself to that by doing it and that is where the family the spouse whoever it is should make the person aware incidentally we've been talking most of the time about men as alcoholics i have been interacting with women who have you know become alcoholics and sometimes it is worse because they are what we refer to as closet drinkers in our society men drinking is accepted so freely but women drinking is frowned upon so many women who are getting caught on to alcohol do it very clandestinely i came across a case where a, the supplier of the alcohol the shopkeeper had started taking advantage and you know harassing uh, uh, this lady because he told her initially that ma'am you are a respectable lady why do you come to the shop people will see you i will deliver the liquor to your house and slowly what he started doing was increasing the price and when she threatened him saying why should i pay you so much i can buy from anywhere else he said i am going to tell the whole world that i have been supplying alcohol to your house and i have been coming on a regular basis to your uh, house and that you are uh, uh. so he started blackmailing her and she had got into deep difficulty just one example i am giving you ha huh, dr nikhat says codependency with an addict is hard to get out of yes i'm glad you brought up this point nikhat because people don't even realize what this codependency is it primarily means that even though you don't drink a drop of alcohol alcohol governs your life so in a way you have become dependent that's why we call them codependent i told you though no? your whole daily routine revolves around that person you get scared when he comes what will happen you get scared that he is having his drinks now what will he do you say okay shall we have dinner at this time or that time or he is uh, you know uh, does some partying drinking he gets up very late in the morning so you have to change your routine for that these are some of the things which you have to be aware uh, uh, of and this is why we call it codependency because your life starts getting affected by alcohol as much as the person who is actually drinking the alcohol right shubha says good morning ali my question is that just when the de addiction is about to be overcome and the person gives up on therapy or any other mode of de addiction and he she is not even open to talk about it what should be uh, done we have to find out the reason behind it i always uh, emphasize know that empathy means understanding the why behind the what so here is this person who had started on the process of recovery was making some progress there was a lot of promise and suddenly he backs out there has to be a reason behind it unless you know the reason you cannot really help the uh, person so become aware 
probe, explore, find out from that person, find out from others around him or her. And once you find what was the trigger which made the person stop the progress that he or she was making, then you know that you can help the person, right? Rakshanda also says, how can you reach out to families who are in denial? Yeah, that's very important. One is the alcoholic being in denial, the other's families. I told you, no, I know of spouses and such people who say, no, 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 he's a very nice person. Once in a while, he likes to drink. Nowadays, he's drinking more because, you know, he is going through stress at his office. These are all the denials which we have to gently, first you accept the statement of the person whom we are talking to, and then slowly make the person ask, how is it affecting your life or your family? And then start creating that awareness that, do you think a change in your stand or a change in your attitude or behavior can bring about a better quality of life? Once that awareness starts, then and then only you can actually make some headway. Pushpa says, with good family support, emotional support, along with trusting the recovering addict, encourage them, helps to recover. That's a very nice point which uh, Pushpa has brought out. That is trusting the recovering addict. I know of people who said, I went to a addiction center, I got myself flushed out, I came back and I was starting a good life and my family members started taunting me, where you will give up, you will not do it. You remember that day how you had got drunk and done this, this is what has caused, you know, this financial problem is because of your drinking. They are not willing to give me a second chance and they are taunting me. So what happened was one fine day I got so fed up I went and had my first drink and then the thing just went on and on. Rakshana says they do not accept that their son or brother or husband is an addict. Meanwhile, it breaks the relationship uh, among them. Yes, how we can help them is to gently but in subtle manner and patiently help them overcome that denial. I told you, you know, there are family members who say he's a wonderful person. He's an excellent person. It's only when he's under the influence of alcohol that he does uh, these things. You cannot use that as a justification. When he knows that he is doing bad things when he's under the influence of uh, alcohol, how can you say that he is a thorough gentleman? He is very good. No, you have to look at the person holistically. So you have to gently, firmly, patiently work on overcoming the denial. Pushpa says, post-addiction behavior problems are severe, need proper treatment. Yes. And this needs a holistic uh, thing. See, only the medical um, aspect many a time is not uh, sufficient. That's why I say that going to a rehab center or going through this re-addiction you know, medical uh, process shows results in the short term. But in the long term, the person needs, you know what Rakshina was saying just now, the person needs support, the person needs to be loved, the person needs to be trusted more than anything else. Yes, Pushpa, whole life is shattered and addicts, by the time they recover, they lose very good period of their life, sometimes even permanently. You know, the wife or children may just leave him and go away. And then he says, okay, I've stopped drinking. They're not going to come back. They've got already used to living without him and they've suffered so much from him that they don't want to even take a chance of uh, coming back. This, that's the risk that he is taking, right? Why does one become an addict? Do some people have a greater tendency to become addictive? If so, why? What's the underlying mechanism at work uh, here? Yes, if a person has grown up in an atmosphere where his elders, his trusted elders, like maybe his father, grandfather, whoever it is, they are drinking on a regular basis, then the person feels there's nothing wrong with it. My father was such a great guy who does so many good things and who's so responsible. He has, uh, he drinks, so I can also start drinking. But addiction sets in based on how early the person starts drinking. If a youngster at 15 years starts drinking, be it beer, be it Bacardi Breezer, his chances of eventually becoming an addict are much higher than a person who became 25 years old, got into some good organization and there they had parties. So because of those parties, he slowly started drinking. The first one has a far greater tendency Similarly, I told you about binge drinkers, people who want to enjoy 
New Year is coming, Sankranti is coming, some occasion is there, so I'm going out with my friends, we have booked this resort for two days and we are going to enjoy ourselves. And the person drinks and drinks and drinks round the clock. Those are the people who are more likely to become addicts. Roshan says, poor people out of poverty to relieve the stress, they start drinking and beating their wives. If some social workers can get together and help them get out of the habit, it will change the whole scene. It is being done, Roshan. I know some very fantastic social workers who reach out in the slums, who reach out to the poor people, even in rural areas, uh, some of them in whatever way. And getting the wives together, you know, there have been so many instances where, you know, the wives have got together in a village and they have thrown out the fellow who, you know, uh, serves or uh, sells the alcohol. They got beaten up by their husband, they got into trouble, all that, but they stuck to their ground because they were united as a collective uh, group. And when these people found that no alcohol is available, automatically the consumption of alcohol went uh, down. Nika says, ask not why the addiction, but why the pain? Yes, that's an excellent way of looking into it. That what is the pain that you are going through? That is what we need to understand, right? Rashmi says, I know someone who has been through all these do's and don'ts. It got worse when none of the family or friends around found alcoholism to be a problem at all. Because nowadays, it's considered to be a cool status to say, men drink and it's okay. And then finally, after all her efforts in vain, she took a step to let go. I have seen this happening to families. Tolerate, 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 protect him, stand by him, sell off jewelry and get money for his uh, drinking, protect him from others by hiding the fact that he gets uh, drunk. It went on and on to the final point where the whole thing breaks, the family breaks. So many times it has happened. And that is where, like somebody had asked, why not nip it in the bud? Why not start taking action? Why wait till it comes to that extreme? Yeshuda says, hi, good morning. And uh, uh, thank you, Ali, for giving so much of insight where I'm able to reach out to so many alcoholics. Yes, uh, Yashoda, you are doing a fantastic work. And I really admire people like uh, you. There are so many, like we were talking about social workers and all that. There are people who have really gone out of the way to help society, particularly the poorer people, when they get desperate out of, uh, you know, so many stresses, uncertainties, poverty, and then they get into drinking, right? Shamla says, when a person realizes that he wants to stop drinking alcohol and is trying to stop, in this case, how can family members be supportive to help them overcome this problem rather than constantly criticizing them? You yourself have given the answer, Shamla, stop criticizing them. Somebody else had also mentioned, have faith and trust in that person. Even if in between, he, did, he kept away from alcohol for 15 days, 16 days, he got drunk. Don't use it as a means to criticize and say, see, 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 you could not keep it up. Just two weeks and now you're drunk. It's okay. You say it happened yesterday. From today, let's start fresh. Let's start. That is the basis on which Alcoholics Anonymous works, no? You have to just go to the meeting. No money, no application form, no paperwork. You just have to stand up and say my name is Ali and I am an alcoholic. And today I have not had my first drink. We are coming to the end of the hour. I'm glad that it has stimulated so many minds and so many thoughts and questions. And like I said, this need not be. I use this hour to raise up certain topics which are of concern to many, many people. So we start by stimulating it. I will go on to answering your questions or clearing your doubts. If you get in touch with us, you can send us an email or you can drop in or call us up. I would like to help not only the people who are getting addicted, but to their family members, their children. It becomes a very bad, vicious uh, um, uh, cycle. Like with the other side, if a child is mentally getting affected because of parents' alcoholism, should the child be counseled first or the parents? No, there's no question of first and uh, second with it. Both of them, simultaneously, you have to work on the A. And it's better if you work simultaneously because when A shows some you know, progress, B backs it up. And when B shows some progress, A backs it up. That is how we have to do. And that is why I, as I said that, uh, uh, you know, if somebody is extremely apologetic, how can we um, help them? Again, as I said, we have to go into the details, understand what the person is apologetic about how the family dynamics is, how much is the pain, as Nikhat rightly 
uh, say what are you suffering from you have to look into on that and with that the clock has struck 12 so i take your leave i will be back with you all next saturday at 11 o'clock and here is anis putting on the topic which is a very very positive and a lively topic which is creating win-win situations most of us think that for me to win somebody else has to lose but that is not uh, uh, true i still see some questions coming in please feel free to forward those questions to me by email i would like to respond to you and i would like to see if there's some way in which i can uh, uh, help thank you very much and have a wonderful saturday bye bye